President Biden is pushing forward with a potentially historic pick for the Supreme Court. He nominated Ketanji Brown Jackson as the pick to replace retiring Justice Stephen Breyer. Joining us now, political commentator Jonathan Harris. Good morning to you. Thanks so much for being on the show. Good morning. Let's talk about this historic significance of this pick on the nation's highest court here, this nomination. What are your thoughts? Well, it, it looks like it's not going to change the, the balance of the court. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a progressive uh, pro uh, replacing another progressive. So we're not looking at any shift in the balance of the court. But I mean, definitely uh, a historic uh, appointment to the court, potentially um, first African-American woman appointed to the court. It's interesting also that it would be the first time two African-Americans have sat on the court as well as the first time four women have sat on the on the Supreme Court. Uh, so a lot of a lot of history there. I know that there's a lot of people on uh, the right who uh, have taken issue with that, but definitely not unprecedented, even the prior administration um, appointing, saying that they were going to appoint a woman to the court. So certainly a historical precedent there and uh, something that a lot of people are looking forward to bringing a different perspective to the court. Yeah, you're right. Regarding the balance, it still will remain a uh, six to three conservative majority. But what, what does Judge uh, Jackson bring to, to the court? I mean, she's going to probably approach things a little differently than Justice Breyer did, even though they're both seen as more liberal justices, right? Right. I mean, she has a, a, a scroll of qualifications. I was looking through it this morning when I was doing the research, just uh, graduated from Harvard Law School and she did uh, Harvard uh, undergrad, graduated magna cum laude. She was a, a federal public defender. Um, she's already been confirmed by the Senate three times uh, as a U.S. on the U.S. Sentencing Commission, um, the federal district court, U.S. Court of Appeals. So really a, a laundry list of qualifications. They're one of the one of the more qualified uh, judges that we've had recently. Yeah, I was looking at that too. The federal appellate judge, she won confirmation with 53 votes, and that included uh, three Republicans. So, uh, right, what, bipartisan what you, support as yeah, well. Yeah, so what do you think about this bipartisan support, the process of the nomination? Do you expect much pushback from the GOP, or do you think that um, this is going to be pretty smooth sailing for her? Well, President Biden already talked about um, seeking the input of both sides of the aisle, um, saying that he has a constitutional responsibility to, to seek the advice uh, of both sides of the aisle. He said he's done that. So uh, we, we know we live in pretty partisan times right now. So I wouldn't I wouldn't put anything past uh, the partisan times that we live in to, to hold up this nomination. But if, in fact, uh, Biden has already sought um, the approval of of people from both sides yeah. of the aisle, it probably won't uh, take too long. As I said, already being uh, confirmed by the Senate uh, three times already, it probably should be fairly a fairly easy process unless uh, politics get involved there. Yeah, it was interesting because I looked back at Breyer. He was confirmed in uh, 1994 by an 87 to nine vote. Boy, things were a lot different back then. I don't think it's probably going to be different. not going to be quite like that. But let's uh, let's talk about having a black woman, the first in our nation's history. To, how that's going to not only better the court, but but better our country, right? Absolutely. I was actually watching um, Biden's remarks as he was introducing her. And one of the things that stood out to me was when he was talking about how her parents uh, dealt with segregation. And I think it's just a reminder that, you know, I think for a lot of people, they think that that literally structural, organized, systemic racism is is a distant memory, but it really isn't. I mean, you have the parents of people that are being uh, appointed to the court uh, people very well alive today that dealt with that. And, and I think bringing that perspective to the court is going to be uh, something that's powerful. I think sometimes we aren't um, able to understand how to discuss that our backgrounds really do help us uh, when we come to an issue. We all do come to issues from different places and, and having a wider perspective there. Um, Biden pointed out also that for too long that the court hasn't looked like America. So it's also right. a step in, in making sure that the court uh, does look more like this country. So a, a very, very powerful, important thing uh, that, that will be potentially happening right. here. Jonathan Harris, thanks so much for joining us. And welcome back to San Diego. I know you uh, you lived here, you moved to D.C., and you're happy to be back home here. So glad you're here. Very happy to be back home. Uh, happy to pay the sunshine tax. There you go. Yeah, we're all doing that. Thanks again for your time, Jonathan.